In the previous segment, uh, we discussed simple moving average method for demand forecasting. And there we assigned equal weightage to the actual demand or sales data for the previous periods. For example, if you used N is equal to two, and for example, if you were forecasting for June, so the forecast for June would be uh, the average of actual demand for April and May. So that will be actual demand for April plus actual demand for May divided by two. So we were assigning 50% weightage to the actual sales or demand data for both months. So we can say that weight for April and May was 0 0.50 each. Similarly, if we used uh, N is equal to three, so the forecast for June would be equal to the actual demand for March plus actual demand for April plus actual demand for May divided by three. So we were assigning the weight equal to one over three for each of the three periods. That is for March, April, and May. So weight was 0.33 for the three months. Similarly, if you use n is equal to four, so weight would be equal for the four months, and that would be 0.25. For n is equal to five, that would be equal for all the five months, and that would be equal to 0 0.20. Uh, but what if we want to assign a different weight to different months? So in that case, we can use a weighted moving average. So this method adjusts moving average method to more closely reflect data fluctuations. So we can as assign different weights to the actual demand or sales data for different periods. So the forecast for period T plus one would be equal to a weight assigned for and the period multiplied by the actual sales for that period. And some of the weights should be equal to one. So that is important to be. For example, if we are using N is equal to three, and if we were forecasting for June, so we could assign say 10% weight to, to the actual demand of uh, March and say 30% weight to actual demand of uh, April and the remaining 60% to the actual demand of May. And some of the weights is equal to one. So that is important to be considered. So let's solve simple example. We will be working on the same data as we used for simple moving average. So the data are the same. And here you can see that W1 is 0 0.20 or 20%, W2 is 0 0.30 or 30%, and W3 is 0 0.50 or 50%, and their sum should be equal to so for forecasting the demand for April, we will simply multiply by, we will simply multiply the first weight with the actual demand for January and the second weight with the actual demand of February and the third weight with the actual demand of March. So that would be this 0 0.20 multiplied by 437 plus this 0 0.30 multiplied by 605 plus 0 0.50 multiplied by the actual demand for March. And we will fix the cells for weights. So that is cell C4 
d4 and d4 and then simply drag to forecast the demand for the rest of the months including january 2020 so the question is how we can set these values for uh, for the weights so here we assign the values arbitrarily so is there a way to to have the optimum values so we can use software to, uh, to, to do that in this case we will be using and the solver function in excel to find the optimum values for the So we will use the same formulas. So we can simply copy and paste the formulas. But we have kept the cells for weights empty because we have to find the optimum values. And the sum of these weights should be equal to one. So we can go to the data tab, then solver and the objective function that we are setting is the mean squared error. We want to minimize the error in the case of forecasting. So in this case, we are taking mean squared error, but you can take MAD or MAPE as well. But mean squared error is a, is, is a magnified error, so it is better to take MSE, but you can use the other two measures as well. So we want to minimize the error by changing variable cells or the CM variables are these three cells containing the weights. What will be the constraints? So we want to, we want our forecast to reflect uh, the changes in the recent uh, demand. So we will be assigning higher recent demand data and the lower weights to the previous data. So we want the first weight to be less than the second weight D4 less than or equal to cell D4. And this weight in the cell D4, the second weight should be equal to less than or equal to the third weight. We also want the sum of the weights, the cell F4 in this case, to be equal to one. And of course, the weights cannot be negative, so we are using MSE to be our objective function, so we will set solving method to be CRG nonlinear. Then we will click solve and OK. So you can see that weights are found to be 0 0.41 and 0.59. So W1 is 0 because we had set it less than or equal to, uh, sorry, greater than or equal to 0. So it is zero in this case. And the second way, W2 is 0.41 and W3 is 0.59. And this is the optimum solution. We cannot reduce this error uh, beyond this value of 183 or in the case of MSC, beyond 54,842. So you can play up with these values, for example, if you, if you just uh, notice this MSE 54,842. And let's suppose I, I take some other combination and I make this way say 0 0.35 and uh, 55,000 something. So you can play with these values and you can you will see that the error will be larger than the one we found using the optimum weights. So you can you can plug in different values and you will see that 
error will keep on increasing. So it will be greater than the minimum error that we found using the optimum weights. We can make a side by side comparison as well. So when the weights were assigned arbitrarily, 0 0.20, 0 0.50, the errors were large. So MLE was 192, but for optimum weights of 0 0.41 and 0.59, the error reduced to 183. Same thing you can observe for uh, MSE, 57,296 reduced to 54,842. MAPE reduced from 20.5% to 19.8%. So we discussed uh, simple moving average in the previous segment and weighted moving average in this segment. Just notice one point that moving average does mitigate the effects of random variation as we saw using the the two methods, but it is of limited usefulness for a product with wide seasonal variation. So you can see these data to be seasonal in nature. So it is decreasing and then increasing. So it seems to be a, a product for winter season. So in this case, it is better to incorporate seasonal indexes to forecast the demand. And in, in, in this case, the moving averages will give higher value of error. So we will discuss uh, the seasonally adjusted forecasting method in one of the following segments. Thank you.